Hey, what's up everybody? Mike here, welcome back. In today's video, we're gonna learn all about resource groups, what they are, why we would use them, how we would use them. We're gonna go into the portal and actually create them. And I'm gonna make it super simple for you. All right, so what is a resource group? Well, ultimately a resource group is just a logical container that holds resources. And what is a resource in Azure? It's basically anything. It's a VM, it's a virtual network or a VNet. It is a network security group or NSG. It could be storage, um, other services, right? So I'm just gonna put, I'll just put services. So it could be other services within Azure, right? This basically, a resource group, and I'm gonna put, I'm gonna call this one RGA, uh, right? Resource group A. This could hold all kinds of things. Now, and we could have other resource groups, right? We could have, you know, resource group uh, B, right? And inside of that, we could have a bunch of VMs and so on, right? That's the general idea of a resource group. Now, one of the biggest questions is, um, first, why would I use it? Well you kind of have to. Whenever you deploy a lot of these services, you will be required to pick a resource group for that resource to live inside of. So that's the first one, why? But how can I use it? How can I use it a little bit better than just dumping stuff into one big resource group? Well, there's a few use cases that we could do with resource groups to make, uh, make them work for us, right? One of those, we could potentially uh, set up multiple resource groups. We could say one is our prod resource group. We could have another that is our dev resource group. Maybe we have a third one that is our test resource group and I'll put RG next to these. Now we could do that and one of the benefits there is we could then place resources that are prod inside of prod, right? Our prod VMs all go inside of the prod resource group. Everything's nice and tidy and organized. Now one of the cool things about resource groups is we can also apply policy to the resource group itself. I'll represent that by just kind of this little star. So we could apply policy to the resource group, which effectively would affect everything inside of the resource group. So it's also a kind of a, a management level of control to the resources inside of it. Um, also, if we decided that we wanted to delete, let's say in our test you know, resource group, we have several VMs. If we decided we wanted to delete everything inside of this resource group, we could just delete the test resource group and that actually deletes all of this at the same time. So it typically makes a lot of sense to lifecycle everything together inside of the resource group. That's one of the reasons oftentimes that this layout right here is not my favorite. Um, I would actually prefer in this scenario, instead of having a prod resource group, a dev resource group and test, I would prefer personally separate subscriptions maybe. Um, and there's some other possible um, solutions to that as well, just to keep everything nice and tidy. So I guess the next question is, Mike, if, you know, separating it out by life cycle, prod, test, dev, if that doesn't make sense, what's another way I could use resource groups? Well, another way we could do, uh, we could do it by application. I'll say uh, resource group by app. And I actually kind of like this model. So let's say we have, uh, you know, Mike's pizza app, right? And inside of that app, I have, you know, a bunch of VMs. Uh, maybe I have my web VM, you know, my database VM. Uh, I have, you know, an app VM. So I have a three tier application. Um, I also have, you know, some blob storage. Um, and by the way, if you're familiar with uh, AWS, that would be the equivalent of like S3 if you're new to Azure. Um, basically it's unstructured data. Um, uh, let's see, I could also have, you know, again, a, a public IP could be in here, um, you know, maybe some NSGs. I could have my, my keys for my VMs. I could have all of that stuff inside of this app group, right? Or in this resource group. Now, the benefit there is obviously it's one nice little tidy resource group, but the cool thing is when it comes to billing and understanding my cost, I'll just put billing slash cost, I could actually go into billing and cost management in Azure and I could say, I could say, how much does Mike's, I'm just gonna put pizza app. How much does that cost me per month? Oh, that cost me, you know, $392 per month. Uh, I'll, I'll say maybe our, you know, maybe we have a test app resource group and that one costs us, you know, 
$192, I don't know. But the point is we can use the resource group to better understand how much each individual app is costing us. And now there's other ways we could understand that as well, but I'm just, you know, my own perspective, I think this could be a good use case as well for resource groups. All right, and then the final example that I'll give is we could base the resource groups upon business unit. We could say that HR has their own resource group and IT has their own resource group and finance has their own resource group. That's perfectly fine too. But again, I go back to what I just said a few minutes ago. I kind of like the concept of having different subscriptions. And by the way, for those of you thinking that would be messy, there is a concept called management groups in Azure that helps you manage multiple subscriptions. Now we're not gonna talk about that in this lesson, but I just wanted to share that. So that's why I would advocate for multiple subscriptions over using resource groups. The point is though, we don't really have a choice. We're gonna to have to use resource groups. So I wanna show you now how to actually create a resource group and what they look like. So let's jump into the portal. All right, so here we are inside of Azure. Now we can see right here under the recent that I do have this demo-rg resource group. That is the type right there. Let's go ahead though and let's go over to resource groups right here on our favorites on the left. And by the way, within Azure, if you're kind of new to Azure, you can hit all services to find all services and you can filter for what you're looking for. Um, you could also find it in the favorites if it's listed here. And then you can also search for it. That's actually my preferred method. I like searching for everything there. Um, but in this case, we see that we have all of our resource groups here. Now, if we wanna create a new one, we can just go to create. And from there, we'll decide what subscription we wanna create it under. Uh, I obviously have my prod subscription here. I'll leave it there. I'm gonna say Mike's Pizza App RG. I like appending it with RG resource group. It's just an old habit I have. So um, that's good. I will create this in the East US region. Um, this is really saying, where does the metadata for this resource group, where's that stored at? Cause that's gotta be stored somewhere ultimately. Um, and then, from there, that's it, right? I'm gonna go to review and create, and it says validation passed, and we'll create. All right, so we created the resource group. We see it shows up right here. If we click on the resource group itself, we get this kind of sub menu, and we see right here, there's no resources. We're in the overview tab here. There's nothing listed here. Um, one thing just so you should know while we're in here, if you wanted to delete the entire resource group and all of the resources inside of it, you could click delete resource group right here. It will delete the resource group and everything inside of it. Um, and obviously in our case, we don't wanna do that. Um, another thing I would mention, there's this move button here. If you click it, you can actually move resources from one resource group to another, and you can actually move a resource group to an entirely different subscription. So it's good to know that that's available. Um, in our case, obviously we have nothing in here, so moving things doesn't make a lot of sense. All right, so let's create a quick VM and I'll show you where the resource group comes into play. And again, this is just the first example that comes to mind for me, probably the most common. So let me show you. To create a VM in Azure, we are going to head over to Virtual Machines on the left and we'll go to Create and Azure Virtual Machine. Now this video isn't really about how to create a VM. I'll cover that in another video. So I'm gonna kind of fly through here. The first thing I'll point out though is when we're creating the VM right here at the top, it asks us which resource group do you want to create this VM inside? This is why I said we don't have an option. You don't get to choose if you use them or not. You're gonna use a resource group. The only question is, are you gonna use them in a way that makes sense? So, um, and I should say in a way that makes your life a little easier. Um, so in our case, we see it says new resource group. If you leave this to the default, it will create a resource group every time you create a VM and each VM will be in its own resource group, which is not ideal. So I'm going to change this dropdown and I'll click uh, Mike's Pizza app. And then next I specify the virtual machine name. I'm just gonna say Pizza Web Server 1, something like that. Uh, next I'll leave it in the East US uh, Availability Zone 1. Uh, in my previous video, I talked about regions and AZs. We already went over that. Um, next, I specify the image and all that stuff. Again, this video specifically is not about all that stuff. So we're gonna skip all of that uh, and we'll just head over to review and create. All right, one of the things I wanna mention while we're waiting on this to create is obviously it, it launches you to this screen where it says deployment in progress and it shows the status and we see they're starting to finish here. In the top right though, you see this little bell? If you click it, that will actually give you kind of the live deployment progress or 
uh, status of whatever operation that you've kicked off. So I can actually leave this. If I go to you know home, you'll see my notification stays open. So it's kind of nice if you want to keep an eye on it, but you want to do other things in Azure while that's working, this is a good idea. And I will say that there are a lot of things within Azure um, that will take a few minutes, right? So um, I'm guilty of this where I'll, I'll make a change. And then, um, in fact, I was filming my Azure Fundamentals course, and there's definitely times where in the middle of the course, I would you know, click something and then wait a minute or two and, and get impatient and you know wait five more minutes and then it shows up. So sometimes things will take a few minutes. That's why I like this notification tab to be open. Uh, and then obviously, if you want more details about each you know, uh, event here, you can you know, navigate to them and, and view more detail. But in this case, we see it says deployment, uh, create VM Ubuntu server to resource group Mike's Pizza app RG was successful. If we click go to resource, it'll take us directly to that VM. So I'll go ahead and click that. And I'm gonna close our notifications right here. Now, the only thing I wanted to show you here, so we're looking at an individual resource. This is a single virtual machine. And we can see under the overview tab right here in the very top, it says resource group right here. And it tells us which resource group that, it, that VM is located inside of. Now, if I go to the resource group itself by clicking on that name, this will list all of the resources inside of our new resource group. And you'll see here some of the same components we drew out a few minutes ago. We have SSH keys, disks, network interfaces, VNets, uh, NSGs, public IPs, and of course our virtual machine. So we have a lot of components that now live inside of this resource group. And now, like I said, we have the ability, we could apply policy to this resource group. We could understand cost of this pizza app through this resource group. Uh, and then of course, if we want, we could also delete it, right? We could say, this is the shortest lived app ever. It was a horrible idea. Nobody wants it. Uh, we could click delete resource group. We can copy and paste the name of it, paste it down here and hit delete. And once we do that, we will see that within a minute or so, all of the things here, all of those resources will be deleted, including the resource group itself. That's really it. All right, so that's all I got for you in this video. I hope you found it useful. If you are prepping for the AZ 900 exam, like I said, I do have a course that will be coming out soon, but also I have a lot of YouTube content for the AZ 900 exam that is also coming out around the same time. So either way, I got you covered, but if you found this useful and you wanna see more content like this, like, subscribe, all of that stuff. Drop me a comment if you found it useful. If you didn't find it useful, just click a different video. Don't You don't have to comment. But that said, I hope you all are staying safe and healthy. And until next time, stay nerdy.